the observatory is sited around the rim of the summit at an altitude of about 14,250 feet. Now, the day after the transit, you're going up to that observatory. One of the reasons why it is not advisable to observe the transit from that altitude, you will have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> it is very hard to concentrate on anything. Just working out what to do with your camera exposure, how to put an eyepiece in, takes ages. Your thought processes go at a snail's pace. You get confused. You're not sure whether you've done something or not. I'd mean, like that anyway. <laughs> but it really is hard. You really don't want to be observing something like a transit, a one-off event at that altitude. So 2,000 metres is perfectly adequate. Now, the observatory itself is one of the premier observatories in the world. Well, it's not a telescope behind every bush because there aren't any bushes. <laughs> like King Peak, where there's quite a bit of vegetation, there is nothing up there at all. It's a completely barren volcanic landscape. And the various telescopes scattered around the mountain top. Now, the telescopes are grouped in three bunches University of Hawaii. 0.9 meter educational telescope from the Hawaii University of Hilo. That was put up there in 2010. The older University of Hawaii 2.2 <coughs> meter from the Institute of Astronomy was up there since 1970. The NASA Infrared Telescope Facility, a three meter telescope put up there in 79. The Canada France Hawaii Telescope, 3.6 meters put up there in 79 also. The UK Infrared Telescope, UKIRT, 3.8 metres that was put up there in 1979. Then the big boys, KEP 1 and KEP 2. 10 metre segmented mirror telescopes. Two of them were working together as an interferometer. The first one in there in 93, the second one in 96, paid for by the WM Keck Foundation. The Japanese Subaru Telescope, which is the largest telescope there, at 8.3 metres, although of course larger ones are planned. And then Gemini North, 8.1 metres, which of course the UK has a stake in. Gemini North is in Hawaii, Gemini South is in Chile. Mm -hmm. So those are all the optical infrared telescopes on the mountain. Let's see how they're distributed. So I said they're in three groups. The sub-millimetre telescopes are on the west and southwestern side. Subaru, the two Keck telescopes, and the NASA Infrared Telescope Facility are on the northern rim. <coughs> and then the Canada, France, Hawaii, Gemini North, and the two University of Wire telescopes in UKIRT are on the east southeastern side. So you've got these three groups of telescopes. There is one telescope I'm not showing you here, but you've actually already seen one identical to it. It's slightly away from Kit Peak itself was a 25 meter radio dish from the VLVA, a very large baseline array. There is an identical 25 meter telescope here on the top of Mordecai. So let's have a look then at these three groups of telescopes, beginning with the ones on the eastern, southeastern rim, all on that ridge on the east, southeastern side of the summit. This is the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope, a consortium between uh, Canada-France-Hawaii and a very, very uh, important telescope, because this instrument carries an instrument called MegaCam, which up until recently was one of the largest <coughs> CCD arrays. This is Gemini North. Very unusual design in that the dome opens almost completely to allow rapid temperature equalisation. The louvres all around the side here open up when the telescope is going to be used and you get complete flow of air through the telescope dome. Now we've moved onto the northern edge. So we're looking from the top towards the northern rim. This is the NASA infrared telescope facility here. Keck 1, Keck 2, and Subaru 
the 8.3 metre, the largest telescope on the summit. Here's a NASA infrared telescope facility, not uh, quite as large as UKIRP, but nonetheless a very good infrared telescope. The reason we put infrared telescopes on this summit is because you're above most of the water vapour. And that's why we find not only two of the world's largest infrared telescopes here, the NASA IRTF and UKIRT, but we also find some millimetre telescopes here, which we'll talk about in a moment. KET1 and KET2. But the mirrors are not in one piece. They consist of 32 hexagonal mirror segments held in a paraboloidal configuration by computer-controlled actuators. And these telescopes employ both active and adaptive optics, and they can be linked together as an interferometer. Now, we saw the Chara interferometer up on the summit of Mount Wilson. Here, you're connecting two 10.5 metre telescopes together as an interferometer. And that is how these telescopes have been able to image planets around other stars. Subaru is a single mirror telescope. These are larger, but are segmented. And of course, when they're connected together, they're a very powerful instrument indeed. So there we are, KET1, KET2. And then we have Subaru itself. 8.3 metre telescope in a sort of a drum pillbox style dome, quite unusual, and that's uh, uh, another very large instrument up there, operated by Japan. So here we are, there's NASA Infrared Telescope, KET1, KET2, Subaru. We're now looking in the background at the submillimetre <coughs> telescopes. We've got uh, one there, one there, and there's an array of telescopes. This one is of great interest because this is the British one, the James Clark Maxwell Telescope, the JCMT. So there we are, those are the three submillimetre telescopes, the Caltech Submillimetre Observatory, this one here, which is a 10.4 metre submillimetre telescope, the JCMT, which is a 15 metre telescope, a collaboration between the UK, Canada and the Netherlands, and the submillimetre array, which has been set up at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory in Taiwan. So that is a very quick tour of the summit of Orokaya.